The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Booyah, we are back. It is Monday. That means it is time, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, the 14th of August. Another installment of Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from big time, WWTVCorp.com. My name is Bill Miller, co-host along with... Jeff Belknap. Brett Price. And on the line we have... George. George Jorge <laughs> Mish, the man himself, George. the prognosticator... From Cleveland, Ohio himself is with us again. And since the band is all here, that means it's the round two of college football conference predict, uh, predictions. Um, guys, it's good to have everybody back. Absolutely. Good to be uh, you know, if you were uh, fortunate enough to join us two weeks ago, it was uh, week one uh -huh. our, uh, for our college football predictions. So we have four more conferences uh, to discuss today. And uh, needless to say, um, it's... Uh, we are now on uh, four more conferences. I'm losing you, Billy. Yep. <laughs> can you hear me? It, yes, I can now. Hey, okay. we just care about the if the people can hear us. We'll deal oh, with you later. Oh, that's good. That's fine. That's, I'll right. talk about UAB then. There, oh, there you go. <laughs> Back to <laughs> But anyway, UNLV will be here, but we're going to actually yes, right. save the Mountain West Conference for last. So, guys, uh, we're going to start with the AAC. Uh, we're also going to be discussing tonight, if you're right, keeping your own crib sheets, Big 12, Independence, and we'll wrap it up with the Mountain West Conference. So, we're going to go with the AAC. Round one, who would like to go first? George. <laughs> <laughs> See, you see how right. I do that? Right. I want to get you involved. How many right is there? Were there 12, uh, 12, 14, something There's a bunch like of them. Yeah, a bunch of them. Last <laughs> place, we're going with East Carolina. Um, we're not talking about much, but uh, they're pathetic. I, I actually have readings this week and, and wins, so uh, I have a power points of 27 for them and uh, around four wins that they'll end up with, if I'm correct. Uh Next up is the, seriously, how many is it here, 14? A lot. Yeah, there's 14 yeah, teams. Four, thir number 13, uh, UConn, who uh, went with their junior, uh, <coughs> excuse me, J.C. transfer, uh, Pindell today to go up in quarterback and get rid of the, the guy that was, has been there with no offense. They're 13th for one reason, and that's, uh, it doesn't take more than this, nine points last year. Did nine nine in first quarter the whole year. Ooh. Not good. 13th place. Uh, number 12, uh, Tulane. Oh, uh, pardon me. 28 uh, uh, power points with uh, two or three wins on that one. Tulane is next. Uh, they should, they, they are going to be better only because they brought in a quarterback that actually runs Fritz's uh, option offense. A quarterback transfer from Kansas State Banks is his name. So they should be better, but uh, the, it'll take a while to get them together. I got them uh, way ahead of the other guys, 35 points with a four-win season. Then back home to Ohio, Cincinnati. I'm not the biggest fickle fan, and, uh, and I don't really see them doing much. They're going to a spread, and uh, they, the quarterbacks throw too many interceptions. They were looking for Gibson to come in from Ohio State, but then he went to a J.C. college, and I don't see them doing much. 39 points with six wins. Whew. SMU Take a breath. is next. Take a breath. Uh, uh, I, I, they have not announced a quarterback yet, but this Peavy in Arkansas transfer could be the guy, or Hicks, but uh, they should be fun on the, on the offensive side of the ball. But uh, I think the defense will let them down once again. I got them a 40 with six wins as far as points go. Now we're on to it. We're going to take Temple down a few knots after they uh, lost their coach. And uh, they're going to run, run, run. And uh, they have four guys tr uh, being for quarterback. Not a good sign at this point of the time. The defense also lost a lot of graduation. 
And uh, but next year they should be right back where they were uh, the, uh, the year before. Forty-one seven wins for Temple. Uh, UCF. My only comment. Uh, everybody loves Scott Frost, but did he really beat anybody last year that was worthwhile? Um, I don't think their offense is is up to snuff again. Their defense uh, is going to go down a little bit. Thus, I have them at 41 with six wins. Uh, fun team, if they find a quarterback, which they always do, is Tulsa. One thing you know about them, with their plug-and-play uh, uh, thing, they're going to uh, beat the teams they're supposed to beat and usually get the snot beat out of them by the teams they're not supposed to. They're very <laughs> easy to predict. Pretty much. <laughs> Pardon me? I said pretty much. That's what yeah, gonna and uh, I got them at 43 with six wins. Uh doesn't matter how many graduates come out of the uh, Navy, but Navy still will be back. Uh, their quarterback proved he could, in the bowl game, be, be pretty damn good. They still have a lot of graduation. Their defense will not be that great, but they'll still get seven wins with a 46 points for them. Houston, interesting team. Uh, they lost Herman just when they really like to keep them, but uh, they have a Texas A&M transfer. Allen came in, and uh, he really wasn't that good at Texas A&M, so he's really the what the basis is uh, for uh, what they're going to do. Their offensive line running back, fantastic. Uh, nine wins and 50 points for Houston. I don't have much written up for the last two because it's obvious. Memphis I have at uh, second place. The only turnover of their team is their defensive backs, yet they bring in an Oklahoma J, uh, Junior College, uh, two of them, and one from Missouri, so that'll take care of it. Uh, they are a complete team, and Ferguson, solid quarterback. Uh, they actually passed to set up the run. I got them at 52 with nine wins. And last but not least, before I run out of gas, USF, uh, I think I have them 25th in the in the, in the uh nation at this moment. Quarterback Flowers, one of the best in the country. Uh, their biggest loss, of course, is Mack, the running back. Uh, they'll have to find out uh, somebody to replace him, which will be probably not done, but uh, they got to get somebody close. They lost their top receiver and two of their solid offensive linemen, but uh, they have nine, 11, 9 out of 11 back on defense. I have them winning the conference, winning 10 or 11 games and at 56. <laughs> Georgie, thank you, man. Thank you for taking the lead and uh, kicking us off tonight. And let me just recap real quick, and this will be from one down to five. Uh, you have USF as number one, Memphis as number two, Houston number three, UCF number four, and who is your fifth? Nope. Fourth is Navy, fifth is Tulsa. Okay, fourth is Navy? Yep. Okay, and fifth is Tulsa. Got it. Yes. Taking a nap again, Billy. Come on. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's because I was talking about the cutting board, the chick that open, open, uh, owned the cutting board, <laughs> describing him to Bill, and he's getting a little, you know. Just have a hankering for Filipino food. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can All I right. bring up something really? I wanted to do this at the start, but you got busy, and but we're running so fast, it's ridiculous. Let's do it. How do you, this is the ultimate, in, I'm on to baseball now. Chris Bryant has reached base 14 of his last 16 at play, uh, plate appearances, uh, 10, 10 for 12 in hits, and Sh Schwarber, who crucified the Cleveland Indians, has struck out his last eight times in, in a row and is hitting 190. That makes, I, I, I'm stunned. That's why sports betting is, is or baseball. Yeah. You're the only one, Jeff, that knows what you're doing. Didn't he, he got sent down You must down pick him after Schwarber? the game is over. I don't know, but I'm just going to, it's, it's amazing. Do you think that's how I do it? We should check my Twitter so you can. I, I do. I did. I'm just kidding you. I'm just, oh, uh, I'm not Lord. mad. Did, wait, did I say that like I was mad? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. No, you're doing very good. I'm uh, just it's it's just frustrating with some of these games. But anyway, let's go on to that. Wait, I'm hold on, because let's it. touch on that for a second. Because it is, believe me, next year I want to keep track of my one run or half run losses. Oh yeah. Because be, I think that if I kept track of that, I would be close to eighty percent. Because it's so but how so about ridiculous. The one, one run wins. Okay. Well, we could do that as well. Because okay. um, the amount of times that I've lost by a half a run in like mm -hmm. one run it's it's like alarming 
Like, I you know, be, which basically means I'm on the right side. Right. You know, because if you, I mean, if you're picking a game and you're within a half a run or a run or whatever, you're basically on the right side. It's just like one break that, that hasn't happened. So, yep. But hey, you're it's every, every, but Jeff and I agree with you 400%, but it's just the same in all the sports. I mean, a late, late score by somebody covers the spread in football, et cetera, et cetera, a basket, uh, you know. I, I just appreciate your boys from Cleveland covering for me today. It looks like they're up top of the night, seven three, and yes, they are. That, Very that, nice. That was the actually one nine, of my uh, big bets today. So. Uh, yes, uh, only only team in America has a four point seven five ERA for a pitcher, a uh, Bauer, and he's going to win his eleventh game. And, well, uh, he, he pitched against this two though. runs, uh, but that's enough. But then Carson Carnacion has a two two uh, two run home runs. How so about the bullpen? So, this anyway, last series didn't even give up a hit the whole series. Well, yesterday I had uh, Cleveland plus one thirty. An easy, easy win. Yeah. I mean, never even sweat it. Play good. Yeah. You know, you I'm know, sorry to start this, Billy. Now we're behind. <laughs> okay. No, no, it's good because uh, Houston's really been playing like crap. Now let's just talk about that for a second. Who? Houston has actually been playing like crap. Houston. Me and Bill here. talked about that. Uh, yeah, I, they're uh, terrible. Actually, they're 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 just 500 since the All Star break, but uh, they have such a big lead. I, I as I told Bill. I don't know if their pitching is is up to snuff, but uh, I just think they don't want to get hurt before because they got they got this sewed up. Mm. I mean, pretty much. Only the they Dodgers. A few can, years ago, they got the rings uh, already sized yeah. up for them. Yeah, yeah. was it and last year? Right against Texas, they were up. Over yeah, unfortunately, games. they were up, and uh, they they end up really fading fast. I would hate to see that Houston team do it, repeat the same thing or just make it way too interesting the last week. Right. Um, because I think it would really kind of for shake picked. their confidence going forward. <laughs> well, hey, listen. You know, I have them. I have them to win the pennant. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's move forward. All right. Who All right want, so, who hey, like I'll go next. Up next. Okay. So I'm just going to pick my top teams. Okay. How about that? Because we can just make Chicken. this really. How are you quick. starting from? Uh, you want me to go from one to three? I'm. Gonna, I'm going to go three. I just. I just. I thought we were just doing three. So, um, I like Navy to to put some heat on people, okay. but. Um, Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati and Tulsa are like the three, four, like flip teams. You know, they like where anything that can happen. And then, you know, I just see uh, Houston, you know, coming out of that division, and you know, really competing. You know, you got a new coach. I mean, those the, a lot of these guys are seasoned in a sense, but they got a new coach, so you never know how they're going to deal with that. You know, mm-hmm. a major Apple White coming from uh, Texas, and then you have He's been a, the OC there though. He has, yep. but I mean, to to step up to that new role is, oh, is yeah, like a huge different. is a yeah. huge deal. And then, um, you know, uh, South Florida I think wins the conference like without too you much. You don't have Memphis in there anywhere. I have Memphis, I think fourth, fourth or fifth. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you have South Florida as number one. I do. So you <laughs> let me give you the lowdown because I know Bill's like trying to to write his. Own. So I have um, South Florida, mm-hmm. and then Cincinnati, Houston are like one two. I mean two three. I'm sorry, and then Tulsa, Memphis is the the four or five. Okay. All right. I see some good football in that conference. That, uh, the West is loaded. Yeah. That side is got all the good teams. You know UCF. I mean uh, USF is on the the east side, and yeah, they're going to coast through. That's Temple's why they're going to win. going to be the, as strong, and then it goes down to Cincinnati. Then from yeah. there. So, right, um, like I said, I, I'll do the tier. Okay. Tier thing. Uh, my tier four teams are uh, Cincinnati, East Carolina, Tulane, and UConn. Um, then tier three, SMU. I think they're going to be improved. Um, and like George said, I got U U uh, C F next. I think they're going to take a step back. I like he, like he said. I think they won a lot of games. That, I think they're going to take a major step back. Yeah, I think so too. Um, then tier two, I got Temple, Navy, and Tulsa. Um, I really like Tulsa. I, I like um, if they can get some quarterback play, which they normally do. Got a good running back back, uh, 1,400 yard runner. They're, they're um, going to run a lot. They got their O line, four of their O line back. Mm-hmm. Get some defense, and their schedule's really, really favorable. They got a lot of the big games at home. So um, then my tier ones are Memphis, um, South Florida, and Houston. Um, oh, so I like. I like. Uh oh. Uh oh. So I'm, I'm going to give you an order here, starting at starting at uh, number two. Number two. <laughs> I'm going to go four. I'm going to go Houston four, Tulsa three, 
and USF two and Memphis one. Wow. Okay. So. Wow, that's yeah. a huge difference for me because I had them like four or five. So. All right. Hey, Billy. Yes. Uh, I'm amending mine. I want uh, the two through fourteen are all tied. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. That, that makes it a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> And then your one is Ohio State. Well, you're, the we, the three of you are very consistent with regard to USF. Uh, two of you have yeah, them at be, number one, and very one good. has you at number two. Yeah. So uh, you see them pretty much just kind of. Both yeah. you gentlemen, do you see them in the top twenty-five at any time? Uh, uh, USF. Yes. Definitely. In the in yes. the low, like twenty or below. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So listen. Next up, let's do the uh, the independents. And who would like to start us off there? I will. Oh, okay. George, George. There he George. goes. Yes, I know there's only four of them, so this is an easy. <laughs> right. Number four doesn't mean much, although I, I'm excited about their offense. Uh, obviously, UMass is going to be number four uh, with uh, uh, the running back Young, uh, uh, the quarterback four, their tight end. Uh, they have a couple receivers. They're going to be fine. They're experienced on defense, but. Uh, that's about it. Uh, but uh, I see them winning. Uh, I didn't even make this. Let's see, uh, three games and 27 point ranking here. Uh, next is the favorite one of my teams last year. Nobody told me that, but I tell you, Army. <laughs> Army, I think will win about six. There, there is really nothing to tell you about Army. Although they, this is one of the few years I've ever seen 16. Well, actually 15, because one left for Notre Dame. 15 players uh, coming back starters, which is un- unheard of for a service team. Um, but they're just going to run, and Bradshaw will throw once in a minute, and uh, and I think they're going to finish with about uh, six wins, six and six, with 36 points as a power ranking. Then comes your BYUs. Uh, I've always loved this guy now that he's in his 14th year, Mangum. Um, he seems to be just staying there, and, and uh, he's now the starter. And he gets injured a lot, so, um, so. if he can stay, he's a if he can stay healthy, he's a good runner. Uh, and this BYU is also another team like uh, one of the teams I oh Tulsa is that they uh, they're pretty predictable when when they're supposed to win they win when they're supposed to lose they can lose and their your schedule will give you the answer for that. Uh, uh, they lost a wonderful runner in Williams, so that hurts a bit. Uh, their old line is okay. And uh, the receivers were gutted. Defense is going to be a BYU defense, which will be pretty, pretty safe uh, as far as being decent. Yeah. I have them at uh, something. I got lost here somewhere. I'll get it for you. Not totally. Fifty-one and uh, yeah, and about uh, nine wins. And then I got uh, Notre Dame at top. Uh, this. Needless to say, Kelly is on the hot seat. If he don't do this this year, I think you'll uh, you may see Forrest Gregg back or something. I, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. But uh, really Winbush nice. is—they got everything everything going for him. They have. Uh, uh, you look at the All Americans all around. It's all up to Winbush whether he can uh, replace Kaiser. Well, actually, better than that, and and just uh, do the job. I have them at uh, um, 57 and about eight wins. Nine wins. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, that's so, it. Okay. I think I got this right. So only four <laughs> yeah, teams. that's not that. Uh, God, I hope so. Um, I would like to go second. Want to go? Yeah, I'll go. go. Um, Actually, I'm wrong. Can I uh, can I amend this? I don't know if anybody cares about the power. I had Notre Dame at 62 and BYU at 53. Not that it matters. No. Oh, wow. But for me, it does. Yeah. Just going to UMass, you know, it is UMass. So Pardon me? I said going to UMass, it is UMass, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on them. So no. Because you threw in the first two letters for some reason? <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I'm gotcha. Just, yeah. All right. Sneaky. <laughs> Army, I think Army's going to take a little step back this year just because everything went right for them last year um, to get that 8-6 and six record. Yeah. Um, finally beating Navy. Which is a big accomplishment Huge. for them. I think their offense is going to be good because they do return a lot of guys. Um, uh, but you know, it's just schedule-wise. I mean, they're they, they're going to Ohio State. They're got to go to Air Force, and then you know, Navy at the end type of thing, and then um, play, play a lot of MAC teams as well. Yeah. But 
Uh, then BYU, um, like <laughs> Tanner Magnum back. He's only a junior. He maybe he's been there, like George said, six years. Um, <laughs> loser <laughs> runners, but their offensive line got four four back. Um, so that should be a positive for them. Um, the defense um, really came on at the end of the year last year, um, giving up less than 20 points a game. Uh, but their September schedule's murder um, with LSU to open uh, neutral site and then versus Utah and then versus Wisconsin. Yep. Uh, both of them at home, but those are two pretty good teams. They are very good teams. Uh, and then I got Notre Dame. You know, Notre Dame losing a lot of close games last year. Injury bug hit them again two years in a row. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. And they got four offensive linemen back, and then, then Wimbush. And then the other one I think is a huge key is you got Josh Adams back at running back. Uh, I like I like him a lot. Um, the thing is they face 11 bowl teams from 16. Their schedule's always murder. Yeah. You know, and it's always tough. Um, you know, they got Georgia the second week, then they got a Michigan State, and then they got North Carolina, and they got USC, and they got North Carolina State, and at Miami, and then Stanford. I mean, it's going to be tough, I think, for Actually, them to I win eight games. I didn't put it in. I'm, I'm breaking you up, but I'm sorry. That I forgot to tell you, they have 11 out of 12 games on their schedule. All went to Bulls, and then the 12th is Michigan State. So you, you will do yeah. it right. <laughs> exactly. For the first time, really. So, and they got new, all new coordin- coordinators, too. Um, so, you know, it's rolling the dice. You know, see what they see what they can do. They got the talent. The schedule's tough. The new scheme. See what they can do. All right, Jeffrey. Well, I'm not going to talk about the other two teams, but BYU is. Um, you know, they play some really solid squads, especially in the beginning mm-hmm. of the season. LSU at in in um, RGC mm-hmm. or in in Houston. In Houston, that's going to be a tough game. And then they go to uh, Utah and play, and then Wisconsin. I th- think that's going to be a difficult start for them, you know, just to you know to fire off like three games like mm-hmm. that are big games, or well, three of four games. Portland State's their first game, which is like a W basically, but um, they should pretty much coast after that, in my opinion. So that's going to give them an opportunity to be able to win enough games to obviously go to a bowl or whatever. Real good bowl, yeah. Um, Notre Dame, on the other hand. That's going to be a little more challenging. I think that the fact that you have to play – you can say whatever you want about Michigan State in their season last year. The, the team's going to come back. I mean, they're 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 coached by a great group of coaches. Mm-hmm. They they have the talent pool that actually comes in. And, and I think that, like, Michigan, Ohio State, and those other teams that have really been able to pull the players are going to hurt Michigan State. But they're not going to stop Michigan State from being able to pull the guys in. So I, I – see that team coming back Notre Dame has an opportunity to win seven eight games easily if they stay together as a team I mean that that's the, gonna be the challenge they they do have some um, especially the second half of their season playing some really really solid uh, opponents mm-hmm. but well they're playing they play a lot of ACC schools and the ACC is arguably the best conference this year um, so that's arguably, arguably the best conference is is what is what uh, George. Well, you can start with me. Yeah, Pac-12. <laughs> <laughs> kind of goes. No, next that, year so. when uh, when we get a rookie quarterback starting at UCLA, mm-hmm. Dorian Thomas. It was Thompson just here last week. Yeah. Do you believe BYU should uh, find a uh, conference again? Absolutely. Yes. I think Notre Dame doesn't want to because they got their own TV station and every. I mean, it's it's not worth it. But uh, I think BYU gets hurt by that. I, well, I think it's all about money, you know. And yeah. I mean, what what BYU do, BYU should do is play against the other Utah teams, which is they obviously going to bring the market. Well, they always you play, know, you know, Utah with the Holy War, right? Thing, so. But. Yeah, I'd be smart for them. I mean, yeah. they got their own TV stuff, but who ever watches? That. Well, speaking of TV stuff, <laughs> speaking of TV stuff, did you guys hear that um, Faith Lutheran has their own? Um, their games are going to be televised. Oh, really? On Direct TV, yeah. yeah I had no I idea. Hear you what? Faith Lutheran, which is a local high school, like probably oh, okay. a couple of miles from where we're at right now, is going to actually have their own station, um, run by their students, by the way. Cool. And they're going to actually put their games on TV on That's Direct cool. TV. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Uh, it's very cool, um, and we wish them luck. I mean, we we know the coach of uh, 
a faith Lutheran. Vernon, Vernon Frog. Yeah. Vernon Fox. Uh, you know, former NFL player. And, yeah. uh, Detroit Lion. Come on. D D Lion. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, and we, honestly, we can say a friend of the uh, of the show as well. Absolutely. He's uh, taken time out of his schedule a few times to uh, to come to Southern Nevada Sports News. So uh, well done, and we wish uh, Faith Lutheran luck. Absolutely. Yeah, Lisa can kicking off next wish week. Wish I right? had. Uh, yeah. yeah well, I don't have Direct TV, so. I, I guess I'm going to have to find out what's going on. I'll just go to the games with us. Or, or go to the game. <laughs> nice stadium, too. You know, Update. Uh, Cleveland wins 7-3. Yes, sir. Right away, Cleveland. Go. Way to go, Cleveland. And drive. Schwarber took one for the team. He got, heat, he got hit in the backside, so he's, he's <laughs> broken his streak. <laughs> That's one way to get on base. Lean into one. All right. Okay, so... Uh, you know, we've got Notre Dame, BYU, and your. Billy, I'm not trying to be upsetting to you, but I can't hear at all what you're saying. Okay, I was just saying that. Uh, just to recap, Jeff, uh, he mentioned Notre Dame and then BYU, but he doesn't wasn't really sure about UMass and Army, where they ran third and fourth. Mm-hmm. Third and fourth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're uh, not going to be. Either, I don't think either one. I think that Army will come back and be able to play a couple games, but. I mean, when I say that, I mean, I mean like compete like in a couple games. Type yeah, season, but it's yeah. going to be. All right. I mean, UMass is not a very good team. I don't think I can no. go ahead and complete that. You guys are pretty much unanimous on that. But yeah. With four picks. It was uh, bound to happen sooner or later. All Wait, right. all four? Did we get all four of the same? Yeah. Four of the same. I think it's the first time. Yeah. That was rough. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, next, we're, we're moving up to uh, one of the power conferences, the Big 12. And uh, who would like to start off first with that one? Let's keep it going. Uh, I always want to say this guy's name is Zilmo Beatty, but only Bill would remember him probably, <laughs> the, uh, the basketball player. Yes. But David Beatty, is, uh, he's, got some, he's only won a couple games, but he actually has a pretty decent team. The reason I say this, he got the quarterback from Washington State who sat behind uh, uh, their uh, other quarterbacks, and Bender coming in uh and they actually have some uh, uh, good transfers, decent sophomores. Uh, they're taking baby steps to get where they got to, and I think a big acquisition was bringing Meachup in from TCU as their offensive coordinator, which is going to up-tempo their, uh, their offense. Defense is actually better. They're rushed. Uh, they have a, an All-American Armstrong playing tackle, or, or defensive line. I don't know whether it's tackle or not. I think end. I'm sorry. And I think they'll be better. So I gave him a 32 with three wins. Uh, doesn't sound like much, but it's. Uh, I really wanted to put the next team actually there because I think they're going down so fast that uh, whatever Kingsbury uh, to me is in his last year at Texas Tech. Yeah. All offense, no defense. They play nothing. Uh, I understand in an up tempo that the defense is on the field a lot because you're scoring quick, but uh, these guys don't. They, they, you have to play some kind of defense. Case in point, they lost. Uh, in uh, their uh, in in his coaching career, 24 and 26 in four years, he's lost four times when they scored 50 points. Not good. Yeah. Uh, same thing this year. They'll find somebody to replace Mahomes, and uh, and uh, and I think they're going to win about five and go with 45 points uh, in for their power. Iowa State up and coming, but still not there. They got a better offense, but the defense is still questionable. Parks should be a good quarterback for them. Uh, the running backs, receivers are okay, uh, but they have to overcome. The offensive line has a lot of losses, and they, they'll have to overcome that. Uh, but the defense is a uh, big, big turnover. Uh, that that actually could be good because they weren't very good to begin with, but they're still going to give up over 30, which in that conference really isn't that bad anyway. But I have met 46 and about four or five wins. Uh, then West Virginia, uh, they got. There's some people saying top 25. I don't see it. I just have. Okay. They have uh, only eight starters back. Five on offense, three on defense. Greer comes in for Florida to take over the quarterback. Other than that, it's the rest of the team is depleted. Um, I'm sure they're going to be better next year, but right now for this year, it's regression all the way. And I got to see uh, them at about a 51 with six wins. Uh, Baylor, your team there, Matt Rule, will come in and change his whole team to probably a slower, uh, I would think, slower-paced uh, uh, team. Uh, the, the stability is gone, wide receiver, quarterback, offensive line. Uh, they have a better
better defense actually than than uh, they they usually have, or better than they the, the okay defense. So I think that they'll rely on that for a while, and, and uh, they'll be back to being decent. Fifty two with seven wins for Rule and and Baylor. The old man uh, beat cancer, or, and uh, he's I like to put him higher, but I got him right now at uh, fourth. Snyder's Kansas State. They do the same thing every they. Uh, all I have to say is they're 87 and 235 without them, 202 and 105 with them. I'll stick with them. They 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 uh, have a slow tempo. Quarterback runs very efficiently. The running back is fine. The offensive line returns everybody. Uh, their defense should be about average. And as usual, they have one of the best special teams in the world. And that brings me to eight wins and 62 points for Kansas State. Tom Herman goes to Texas, and uh, I think that'll be a lot. I've always liked him at Ohio State. Matter of fact, when you saw he left Ohio State last year, their offense looked pathetic, and that's why Wilson is there from Indiana now. Uh, <laughs> Make the playoff. Pardon me? Lose one game. That's pathetic. 30-0 oh, or 38-0. Anyway, go ahead. Are you mumbling? No, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, go- I'm in a hurry. Who's jabbing okay. at me, George, about Ohio State? Actually, both of you guys. Probably. Okay. <laughs> um, they'll have the, they have the quarterback. Uh, they're going to miss uh, Foreman, though, uh, but uh, they should be okay at that. Uh, offensive line is one of the tops in the country. Uh, wide receivers fine. Defense twenty two out of twenty seven return. So I got Texas at sixty three with a eight win season. Uh, a lot of people don't like these this team, but TCU. I'm, I would like to put them even higher. They have uh, the only problem I have is Hill at quarterback. He one game he's on top of the world, the next game he stinks. He's got to be more consistent, and uh, I think that's the only thing that uh, that will hold them back in offense. With ten returning starters, also in the defense, uh, the back seven returns everybody. The D line is the key to their uh, what they do on defense. Sixty five with nine wins for TCU. Number two. Oklahoma State, Rudolph, uh, Heisman Trophy candidate, yep. terrifying offense. But they have to play defense, and actually they didn't do a bad job under to hold uh, in that conference under 30 points, not bad. So if they do the same thing, uh, uh, they, will, they, they can finish number two at 66 with nine wins. And finally, Oklahoma. I have a, a good friend that I told you this last year on this show that uh, was dying to have Bob Stoops leave. So I'm going to believe in this person who's from Oklahoma and say they're not going to lose a beat with, with Riley in there to give a new, little new blood into it. Mayfield is there. Uh, their running backs and wide receivers have to be replaced, but they can usually do it. Defense is the key to their continued success. 69 with 11 wins for Oklahoma. That's it. All right. Okay, 11 good. wins. That'll get you in the top 10. Absolutely. Definitely. I got, uh, I got uh, uh, starting at the bottom. Um, I will just rank them. Uh, can I got Kansas last? Um, like George said, they are improving. Uh, number nine, Texas Tech. Fun to watch. You know, if you like scoring and stuff like that. Both sides um, of the ball. But yeah, both sides of the ball. I got number eight. I got West Virginia. I'm not real high on West Virginia this year. Um, I don't like their schedule uh, a lot. I'm not a big Dana Holgerson fan, really. Um, and then seven, I got Iowa State. They're up and coming. Campbell, the head coach, I like I like him. Baylor at six. Uh, I think they'll take a little hit. You know, no one no one's really liking Baylor right now at all for n- numerous reasons. Myriad of reasons, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and then uh, five, I got um, K State. I like them. I think they can. They're one of those that if, if things go right, they can possibly win the conference. But things, a lot of things got to go right. Four, I got TCU. They uh, got a lot of guys in, injured last year. Got guys coming back, and like what George said, uh, Kenny Hill just scares me to death. You know. Um, and then three, Texas. Um, just so much talent, <laughs> yeah. and and it's got to come together sometime. And I think Herman might be the guy that brings it together. Um, I think eight wins that George said for them, and I think that's about right for them. Um, two, I got Oklahoma State. Mm. Um, love their offense. Um, Rudolph and then um, 
Justin Hill at running back and James Washington at receiver. I mean, they're they're going to put up some points. Um, just don't think it's going to be enough to get over the hump against Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma does have to go to uh, Stillwater, um, but Oklahoma's just – I think they got the best offensive line in the country. Uh, got Baker Mayfield making plays, and then, you know, it is Oklahoma, so the stable's not empty there. And their defense is is, is good and going to be better this year than it even was last year. So I got Oklahoma winning the Big 12. All right. So oh first two, we actually have one, two, and three the same. Jeffrey. I'm, I'm going to switch it up. Okay. You're, you already knew that, right, George? working on it. Wait, I'm looking, up. I'm, looking up some, I'm looking up somewhere. I'm looking up somewhere. I want to find out when that game is. Oh, oh there it is. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to talk about the bottom conferences, <laughs> the bottom of the conference. I am going to say that Texas, you can say whatever you want about Coach Strong, but he put together the team that is actually going to give a lot of people problems in that conference. And Herman might be the the coach that actually puts that stuff together, but that that was a recruiting class of a of a good coach. You know, he actually put those coach those players together. Texas State is going to be in, in a tough spot. You know, they're going to be who Texas. Oh, I'm sorry, Texas State. Texas they State. They will be in wow. trouble. Wow, they're going to be in a really tough <laughs> they're spot. Really tough yeah, they're like 129. Yeah, so they're really, really right. Bad. No, Texas Tech's going to be in a really tough spot. They're going to give up a lot of a lot of oh, points. Wow. Their defense is in is in a really uh, tough spot. Um, we've had the punter, a pro pro kick guy, yeah, Dominic, pro kick guy, yeah, on uh, on the show, and um, he's going to be punting a lot. He'll, he'll be, gonna yeah, be a, he's going to be busy. Yeah. Um, so I'm jumping around a little bit, but I like actually Oklahoma State because they're because of their offense. They actually challenge for the division. Um, I think that Oklahoma is going to be tough to beat. With the coaching change, is that going to be difficult? Especially with the coaches like stepping down late in the game, I think it's going to be a little more challenging. He's still going to call plays. He's calling. He's, plays yeah, still, he's, so. he's still calling the plays, but not having the guy on the field, and it's that that makes a huge difference for a lot of players, especially when he's the guy that recruited you and he's the guy that brought you in, you know. And then he's in the booth, you know, from there. So I think it's going to be challenging. Um, can I get a side note real quick? Did you guys watch the game with the Chargers and Rams the other night? Bill, Bill your new no. team? No. No. You, you didn't watch that? Yeah. So Boykin came in, played a lot of a lot of uh, minutes, looked really good. You know, TCU, mm-hmm. you know, guy. And um, really liked to see him, you know, play well. I mean, he played in a well, – it wasn't a national championship, but it was one of the playoff games a couple years ago. And um, it was just kind of nice to see a, a, a quarterback – College quarterback that's a good college quarterback actually yeah. do something. So um, I like TCU and Texas, but I'm going to go ranking because I know Bill's ranking right now. <laughs> and, I'm, and I am going to shake it up a little bit. I'm going to take Oklahoma State to win. I'm going to take Oklahoma in second, Texas, and then TCU. I think we have a lot of the same teams. but Yeah. The thing about Texas that scares me is, you know, um, Bouchelle, I mean, he's a nice – quarterback be so little and then the offense that Herman wants to run the quarterback does a lot of reading and running and things like that you know when he had JT Barrett and then you know at Houston he had Ward really good runners I don't see Bouchelle fitting into that and very well too. Yeah. so I, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out on that part yeah, the, your, your O line is sort of I think it, overall with it in a t- from a team standpoint I think Texas has got the talent to actually be able to compete with a lot of teams in the Big 12. And just to add to that, the uh, the, the uh, quarterback behind him is, uh, what is it, Elinger or something like that, and he is a Herman recruit, so uh, yeah, that may be better for the system. Right. In the long run. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, so. he's one play away from getting in there, so. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally. That's why you guys are the greatest <laughs> color commentators in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. It was time, for, uh, last but not least, uh, particularly when it involves a local team, uh, we're going with the Mountain West Conference, uh, of course, home of uh, UNLV. And uh, this is uh, Sanchez's third year? Third year, yes. Third year, okay. Uh, so, uh, la- all right, well, time for the Mountain West Conference, and who'd like to start off other than Jorge Mish? 
Brad, you got it. I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll go back to my tier system here. Tier four, I got Nevada, San Jose State, and Fresno State. Uh, tier three, New Mexico and UNLV. Tier two, Wyoming, Utah State, Hawaii, and Air Force. Um, tier one, Colorado State, Boise State, and San Diego State. I think there's a clear separation um, from the top three to the rest, especially in the in the West. Uh, San Diego State is head and shoulders above anybody in that division. Um, I think you know uh, Hawaii is going to be a little, little better, little surprise type thing. I like them a little bit, um, but I think the Mountain division is very interesting with Colorado State, Boise State, um, Wyoming being in there. Um, I know everybody's real high on, uh, I think jo- I think his name's Josh Allen, the quarterback. Yep. He'll probably, he, um, I, he's going to rank. He's, they're talking pro, Heisman, candidate, maybe type of things like that. He's going to go pro. He's going to go pro, but I don't, I'm not a big, I don't see 56%, all, all the hype. 56%, 27 yes. touchdowns, and 14, 15, 15 interceptions. That is I'm the, not that's buying, the best he can do. I'm not buying that, you know, no. just because they. Ripping is better than that. Yeah. Wait, so since you're on a computer, why don't you look up Goff's stats? Me? Oh. Yeah, G-O-F. I'm not on a computer. I'm, yeah. That came from memory from reading this, right. this afternoon. I'm going to look it over. Right? Go ahead. I'm on what? baseball. Goff's stats last year? <laughs> no, not last year. I mean, last year he wouldn't even – he would be sitting on his couch right now. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I'm – in, in, I like in the West – you know, San Diego State, you know, uh, they lose uh, all-time leading rusher in uh, Pumphrey. Yeah. But, they, you know, Penny, is was he shared time with them, and he actually ran for over 1,000 yards on yep. just 138 carry. He averaged 7.5 yards a carry. Um, so they're not going to drop off there. And, um, and go to their third string, Washington, who averaged 8 a carry. Yeah, I mean – they're 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 gonna be San Diego State. I mean, the quarterback's gonna manage the game. They're gonna play good defense, and they're gonna run the ball, um, and they're gonna win all their conference, a lot of and their conference games, the and lose who their. Doesn't make many mistakes, and he still can throw the ball, so that's uh, that's important too. Yeah, I believe. Sorry. You know, it'll be, it'll be interesting. They are non-conference. They got a, uh, Arizona State and Stanford. You know, it'll be interesting, and then they get Boise State at home um, on the crossover division. Um, Boise State, um, you know, Brett Rippon, good, thir- over 3,600 yards last year, 24 touchdowns, eight uh, interceptions. Um, good receiving core. Defense should be better. Their 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 schedule was what gets me. I mean, they opened up with a good Troy team. Um, Solid. They go to Wazoo. They go to Washington State. They got to go to BYU. They got to go to San Diego State, and they got to go to Colorado State. So I'm not picking them in, in the mountain, <laughs> just on the schedule alone. So my pick in the I mountain got, I got three wins is I got so. color. I like Colorado State. Um, Damn. Sorry, George, <laughs> you should have went first. <laughs> should have went first. Uh, well, I got booted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the boot. I love their schedule. Uh, <laughs> they got a senior quarterback and Stevens. Um, I love the way they finished last last year. The last six games of the year, they averaged almost 48 points a game. Um, they, they got their top two rushers back. They got a good receiver core back, and the defense should be you know uh, solid again with eight returning starters. Um, so I'm in the in the Mountain West Championship game. I got San Diego State against Colorado State, and I'm going to go with Colorado State to win it. No. Sorry, boys. Wait, Sorry, boys. He said, "Damn, like he picked that." I know. So George, Colorado you go. State. You go next. I gotta hear this. Um, you're, you're, let me hang on. Your, your first team is going to be Colorado State. Yes, on the championship yep. game. And then second, San Diego State. SDSU. Okay. And then Boise. And give me a fourth. Uh, I'll go. Uh, UNLV. Colorado. No. <laughs> Do I need to pick it out of the West, or could just overall in the it conference? Just overall. Oh, then I'll go with. Um, I'll go with Wyoming. Wyoming. Really? All right. You think they're going to be able to walk behind their quarterback? Okay. Yeah, I did put up Goff's staff, by the way, <laughs> and uh, 62% for his career at Colorado. How much? 62%. Yeah, 62.3%. He never had the 28 and 15. Matter of fact, his 
he was 35 and 7 the year before went before he came with the 43 and 13. The one year he was 18 and 10, but that's when he was a baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A little, little bit um a little bit different um recruiting class. I understand. Class. I do like him and, and that's uh, fine. You yeah. like him, I don't. But that's I, fine. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm just saying it like this that <laughs> When you when you look at and I give like, you that because if you go back to, I'll go back even farther since we have a few minutes here Aaron Rodgers if you go back to him in college I would not have considered where he's at now to be uh, possible so yeah, I I can understand where you're coming from so well I, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of like who who do you have playing for you in a sense yeah you know and, yes, and when you're talking about Wyoming like how difficult is it to get a, a player to come play when it's like negative three at game time, you know. So I'm trying to move out there, but nobody will help me. <laughs> well, I'll help you. <laughs> Actually, for, uh, would rather you move out here and we could go down to uh, Ellis Island. I've already and have been some here. Been and... there for ten years. You didn't want me then. I'm not coming back. So I'm sorry. Actually, that's not true. You were a voice for the Vegas Kings. So. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, back to Alan, I just, we have this, but I have this written right here. We'll prove his potential because the talent that he, he had around him in the offense took heavy, heavy hits. So he's going to do it. Basically, uh, he will be the man that's doing everything. Uh, he won't have the running back and the receivers took a heavy hit. So if he does it this year, I, I apologize, and I will uh, send him a basket of fruit. That, that's awesome. He probably take it. One of the best games I saw last year was UNLV against Wyoming. Oh, game was like 60-something, 60, 60 60-something. Yeah, 60 60 or something like that. I mean, it was really like back and forth, like especially in the fourth quarter. UNLV came back, scored a couple touchdowns, and then it just kind of went back and forth. Great to watch football. That tells like me that. A lot they hit that Wyoming. last three-pointer at the buzzer, huh? Yeah, it's like a Well, it tells you a lot about yeah, Wyoming. That's a basketball joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> it tells you a lot about Wyoming, but we're talking about the quarterback now. Yeah. But anyways, I'm, I'm going all San Diego State. I, I think that um, Hawaii will be a better team, but um, I, I just don't – I mean, I don't see a lot of teams, like, really excelling in this conference. You know, I no, don't see top 25 like three, teams at like all. Three, no, there's not top 25. So, um, you know, with the exception of, like, some solid play from, like, you know, a bunch of young players, I'll, I'm, let me just segue a little bit. I really like what Sanchez is doing with the Las Vegas players. I'm interested to see how the quarterback does that, the redshirt quarterback. Wait, hold on, because George actually brought him up a couple weeks ago. So do you have any opinion about Rodgers, George? I, if, I mean, I don't, I'm not out there, and I'm, I've been trying to look up some stuff, but I guess in spring he dazzled them. And even if I, so I'm expecting them him to beat the other two quarterbacks that played last year, no? No, he will. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, he's, that's, he, if you know, everything I read about him is just he's a specimen just fantastic. Yep. Um, and now that they have, we're doing all this weird now. Now that Boyd is kind of healthy and the other guy is back, uh, I think they should be solid in, in offense. But the problem is they gutted their whole they defense. Can't stop him, so you're going to be <laughs> in the shootouts every game you play. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, George, just to give you a little heads up, the, um, the fact that you were looking online and were not able to get anything about UNLV. Is basically the same boat we're in. I mean, I don't want to bash you in LV, but I will for a second. I don't think that they're doing anything for their program to actually get players out there. Mm-hmm. And, and here we are in Las Vegas doing a sports show. We don't have, really have a lot of information at all. We've actually mm-hmm. reached out to the, the football. I mean, I have personally reached out to the football to, like, actually get more information, get to the practices. I mean, and they, they had a series of open practices, but they cut those off. Now everything is about, oh, we're going to go through – you know, the, our regular media, which really doesn't give you any information. No. So there really isn't a lot of information, you know, so. Do you uh, feel when the, uh, they move into the stadium at the Raiders Stadium or whatever you call it, is that going to change everything? Well, I hope what they do is they, they don't bring people in like – right, can I bash people for a second? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Good. The I'm pro, actually going to bash, I'm gonna actually gonna bash you and LV man. right now, and I'm actually going to tag them in this. Because what I'm seeing a lot is what happens at UNLV is they they have like a certain amount of people that follow them, and those are the people that they want to follow them. They don't they're not trying to expand it at all. If they go into it 
this whole like new thing with with the Raiders Stadium and everything with that same mentality is going to hurt them substantially. I mean, you have wow. a um, a venue that seats sixty thousand people. I mean, obviously, your best case scenario is that sixty thousand people at a college game. It's going to happen. But if you continue like the pace that they're on, which is basically to shut off the people that they, in their opinion, that they don't like or that they don't need, it's 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 going to hurt them. You know. Um, what do they draw out in uh, the uh, at Boyd? Maybe ten thousand, twelve thousand. Yeah, I was going to okay. say fifteen on the highest. Yeah. I mean, and it, it yeah, holds I mean, about thirty between thirty. I 35. think forty-five. Like if it's maxed out, it's forty-five. Bill took and, me out there the one time. He had to stop for gas, and he had a. It was pulled up before he even left. It was kind of. <laughs> yeah, not a great venue. All right, so yeah, let's. Uh, we got about. Five minutes left. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just going to go San Diego State, Colorado State. I think that that's uh, I mean we it's fair enough to say that that's going to be the championship game and and um you know I'm I'm really rooting for UNLV to do some stuff. I think that uh, Sanchez has done a lot mm-hmm. and 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 I really love the fact that he's reaching out to UNLV players. I mean three of his four captains this year are are local high school players, which I think is great. You know, so yeah, I'm going to be rooting for him, but. You know, quarterback situation, Wyoming. I'm thinking this guy's going to be, and, and, and we're talking about it now. We're just kind of flipping about the fact that well, like what he's done. I think by the end of the year, they're going to be talking about this guy going to first round, first round draft pick, and, and mainly because I don't believe so. Um, mainly because <laughs> I don't think that there's that many great options as quarterback, and I think there's a lot of NFL teams that need quarterbacks. All right. Okay, Georgie. You there? What? Uh, I you you're on. Okay. <laughs> you didn't get no, the boot just, for I good. Got, we just, yeah, well, I'll just give you your right, top five. I appreciate uh, it. We won't go uh, lower than that. But I got number five at Air Force. Just uh, this is kind of a Ignatius thing because McBee is the uh, is the running back, and uh, and he's a uh, solid player. But Air Force, they only have one player returning on defense, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this conference is not. But I, I don't think they're that great anyway. But uh, uh, five wins for them, 36. Well, I won't give you them. Wyoming fourth, uh, even with Al, or the quarterback, yes. Uh, he will prove it. Uh, you guys, well, I will I will bow to you in November or whatever. But uh, he will prove uh, with no talent on or with, with very little talent left on offense uh, what, what he can do. Uh, so that's it. I have San Diego third, but I do have them obviously playing uh, in the – uh, they, they're solid teams, solid, uh, solid even with they had some losses. Uh, Long always has a good running, and, and uh, they will not, with Penny and Washington, will be probably just as good. Uh, the quarterback is there just to not lose games, and their defense is, the best offense is a good defense, and uh, that's very true. They always have a solid run defense, and I think, and their special teams are top 10 material. I have Boise at number two, but I, uh, I, I don't know if I, this is just a numbers thing, but I, they've lost so much. They, they lost their running backs, the receivers. They lost 119 career starts on the offensive line, and uh, the defense lost a lot, but I still have them number two because they've been the most consistent mid-major since uh, I've been following and then I got Colorado State to win it all. Stevens is just my my quarterback guy, uh, and they still have Hill to back him up in case he gets uh, in trouble. They have a lot of experience on both sides of the ball. Uh, their defense could be their albatross. Uh, they gave up 32 last year, and it doesn't look like they're going to change that anytime soon. But I still have them winning the M. W C. All right, we got it in. Guys. I got I got UNLV by the way tenth, but I think I just put this uh, that uh, it's uh, their future is as bright as has ever been since I've been following them, and I think that I I will stick with that. They're in the right direction. I never knew what you guys said about the program, but uh, but uh, I've never. But I could understand what you came through because there is no Vegas thing down there, and I wouldn't want to play in Vegas if you if you had a good stadium because it's just too damn hot. <laughs> it's only for the first couple of years. Well, guys, listen, I really appreciate. It. We've got about a minute left. Uh, I'd like to, you know, thank uh, 
the, needless to say, the co-host here for doing their homework once again uh, for uh, week two of uh, the uh, college football uh, conference preview. Uh, Brett, thank you very much, as You're always, welcome. for being in here. George, as always, thank you for taking time uh, to, to come out to the show. When you can hear us, we really appreciate it. Yeah, if I can hear you now, this is a great ending to this. Right. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Jeff, as did always. Did I get it right? Or I, I think I told you right. Okay, enjoy. All right. <laughs> you guys have a great uh, week, and I'll talk to you when I talk to you. All Thanks, right. George. Thanks, George. Okay, Folks. Take care. Bye-bye. Join us next Monday. And it'll be the 21st for uh, 21st, as always, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time for another installment of Southern Nevada Sports News coming to you from WWD, WWDBTVCorp.com. And uh, if you happen to be in the, the our neck of the woods on Wednesday, uh, 5.30 to 7.30, come down to the studio. We've got a business mixer here. Oh, nice. And uh, you're actually going to have uh, an opportunity to have five minutes on the air. For and, free. Uh, for Hold free, on. which really? uh, John will, uh, and we can also show you the benefits of being on here. We're up to almost uh, eight to 10,000 viewers here. Yep. Uh, onto the show, onward and upward. Have a great week. God bless.